Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? Welcome to the Africa TV ATL Alpha Team League Cup. We are dealing with the quarterfinals here today. It is May 11th, 2019. It's a beautiful sunny day out here somewhere in Washington. You'll never guess where. Um, but hello. Welcome. Hi, I'm Uncommon, and I'm bringing you today some fantastic StarCraft games. Ladies and gentlemen, we have quite a matchup uh, over the next couple of days as we work our way to the semifinals. Today, Black Knight Esports faces off against Infinity Gaming. 3D Clan faces off against the Alpha X in uh, what should be a fantastic series of uh, best of fives. Kind of this team match setup. If you've been following the Alpha Team League, I know you're just as excited as I am to get into these games. Uh, but first, this would absolutely not be possible without our sponsors, so it's very important we take a moment to kick back and let them know that uh, <laughs> we take a moment to really talk about them and how they support us and esports and StarCraft going forward. Um, big sponsor today brought to you by 24 Hour Fitness. Bring your friends and get your results your way with a free fit plan, studio classes, pools, cardio equipment at 436 locations, a network of clubs all included in your membership. Try them free with a seven day pass when you complete one of the sponsor quests. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic that these organizations are coming out here and supporting us in this amateur scene. Uh, I know that when I'm looking for uh, fitness, when I'm looking for drinks and I'm looking for products uh, and there's one out there that's already supporting the things I love I make sure to give them a try so give them a try go take a look 24-hour fitness probably one in your area I know if you're like me uh, it's hard to get out there and, and find time to work out but hey 24 hours means 24 hours are always open for your needs um, that being said it looks like we're getting ready for our first match this first one is going to be between Armani of the Black Knights and Goblin for Infinity Gaming. That's going to be on year zero to kick this off. Ladies and gentlemen, any moment now, you should hear the TikTok. Oh, it's actually not Goblin Luigi. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. It's going to work itself out. So, ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes, StarCraft Fictionatas. It's going to happen. It's coming. I'll see you on the inside. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top right hand corner, in the red, representing Black Knight Esports, it is our money! His opponent on the top left hand side of the corner. Representing Infinity Gaming, this is Goblin! You're watching Afrika TV Alpha Team League Cup semifinals between Black Knight Gaming, or Black Knight Esports, and Infinity Gaming. Okay. Looks like we have um, oh, almost all of my text documents over there. Um, nothing crazy right off the bat. Both these players opening up 
pretty respectful. Yeah, that would have been a hatch first here for Armani. And a quick expansion here uh, from the Goblin. Dropping the Cybernetics Core before a second gateway. Uh, both of them looking to comfortably pace through the early parts of the early game. But never count the Zerg out. Even a hatch first can be quick and disrupting. Following through uh, with, you know, any, any moment you turn on that Ling button, you turn off that Drone button. We could see some aggression here in the middle. It does look like they're starting to power up four Lings in production for Armani. Overlord getting there just in time. Looks like it's going to be Stalker first. Usually points to some kind of gateway play. We'll see what this next building is. This pylon right here. And there we go. We're going for a Robo first. From the from the Black Knight himself. Or from the Goblin himself. That's, that's going to throw me off. Oh uh, yeah, Goblin. Infinity Gaming's Goblin throwing down the, the Robo Facility Stalker. In position not to, not to get the... Overlord anymore, this nice little upper, upper, this nice little upper crust that he's got here is going to hide him from, hide that vision. The third hatchery going down for Armani. Looks like Link's killing these rocks and just kind of ramping up both these players really aiming for that, that macro play, looking for, looking to make sure they don't lose the lead in uh, economically. All right, this Robo into a Twilight Council coming out of Goblin. Starting that immortal production out of the Robo Facility and the wall finishes up. And nothing's nothing's been over there to poke it or threaten it. The first four legs are all Armani's dealing with still. Pumping out five more drones, more queens. Really getting the pace of his larva production going. I do love the, the vision spread here for Armani. He's got the Overlord down here in the south. Oh, Overlord over here cruising with Overlord speed. Getting a good scout around. Let's see. Oh, he saw... He did. He came up here, he saw the Robo, but he did not see the Twilight Council. He's going to park that thing again on the high ground. And as soon as this warp prism comes out, does he use it to pick up the Immortal and move across the map? Does he come over to take out... Get vision on the Overlords and take them out? You know, the, the speed really will go a long way in keeping them from, from falling. Again, this thing comes zooming in here. Uh, he's going to see this gateway explosion. Immortal zealot legs coming through. Nothing on gas. This is a charge lot. This is a charge lot rush. Uh, it is going to be absolutely spotted. Armani knows what to do. He should be building the, pushing that roach button as fast as possible. You see the roachborn just finishing up the bathing nest. Started in the production. Armani's preparing himself for this defense. Will it be enough? Will he get it out in time? All right, double immortal. Everything's going across the map. The Adepts, the Stalkers, handful of Zealots, anything that's not currently being warped in, coming over to meet on the other side of the map. Again, that Ling button being pressed at the moment. Baneling's, uh, Baneling Nest just about finished. Handful of Roaches at the front here. Looks like Armani is preparing uh, the best he can. Getting all those Lings morphed into the Baneling. That's a good, that'll be a good crash against the Zealots. Uh, but right now, this is a pretty scary force of goblins walking across the map right now, pushing away overlords. Uh, the Banelings is all about position here. The links come forward, uh, trying to get us around. The Banelings right into the back, bruising, heavily bruising, and taking out a lot of zealots here. More Banelings on the field. Roaches putting out a significant amount of damage. It does look like Armani's doing a fantastic job of, of handling this push. Having to pull back, though, a constant warp ends are going to be a problem. 22 more Lings on the way. Uh, another round of Zealots uh, ready to crash into this force. Uh, these two Immortals going to go a long way towards evening out this Roach count. A couple more Banelings being morphed in here. It does look like Armani's on the back foot. Some Zealots going up to... Uh, going up to the main base. Uh, gonna catch some Lings a little bit out. Some Lings coming up from the third base. Uh, hitting the freshest warp end, it does look like uh, the Roach is heavily bruised. Anybody's fighter here is more Zealots continue to crash in. Another Baneling uh, explodes in the rear. The drone's being pulled to fight off the Zealots in the south. More drones being pulled out from the main base to stop the split attack. Another round of warp ends. It does look like Goblin is relentless. The, the staying power here is absolutely fantastic as he pulls it back in. And it looks like Goblin takes game number one.
GG Infinity Gaming takes the first round. We get ourselves prepped to go into game number two. And we'll be back with that in just a moment. Love these little, like, screen transition.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We bring you Kairos Junction. On the bottom right hand corner. In the yellow, the Terran. It is future. His opponent in the top. Left hand corner, the Red Zerg representing Black Knight Esports. It is Eggs. And you're watching the Africa TV Alpha Team League Cup semifinals. First semifinals match between the Black Knights and Infinity Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, we have monsters here today for you. Future ready to rock and roll, bringing in. Gonna, hoping to bring it in for his team today, snatch a snatch a win. I would not doubt if this is uh, you know this is their ace player coming up here in the future, but they still do have one heck of a lineup. Taking a taking a look at some of our statistics here, uh, statistics comma lineup. We can talk about uh, Infinity Gaming five two right now in this se in season thirteen of the ATL. Uh, most consistently, they they do play Namshar, Goblin, and uh, Unique Phaser uh, right now. Their lineup looks like, uh, the, I guess the remaining lineup, because we've, we've met Goblin, is, is Future, Jameleon, and Mick Monroe. All looking to face down and push their way up this Tournament Cup. Take the $300 prize pool, $300 plus code prize pool, over at Matcharino. If you're not tracking yet, code's in the chat. Go over to Matcharino, insert the code. Uh, insert the code... Say this again, Africa TV Cup at 50 cents the prize pool for free. Show your support for the Alpha Team League for these pro gamers, for the winners, for the teams. Uh, we're throwing down, Match Arena's throwing down. They're doing a great thing for us here. Um, being said, on the other side, the Black Knights, they're, they have eggs right now facing down the monster future over here doing some, uh, trying to take out this Reaper. Uh, back behind him is Cham and Terran. So again, monsters in their own right on the other side of the team. Although kicking it off, taking the first win last game, Goblin with Zealot, with Zealot Leg Rush right up the front door uh, of Armani's base, uh, taking it with a pretty decisive engagement. Uh, future here, getting a lot of, getting a lot of harass and, and just, I want to say time, health, damage out here on the, on the Lings and the Queen. Keeping, keeping this Reaper over here gives him a good sense, consistent sense of what's going on. Now, I don't think he knows about that third base down at the bottom. Taking a quick look around here, getting a getting an idea of where this game is going. Looks like it is a 1-1-1 out of future. Two Hellions coming out, a couple Hellions and a Reaper on the other side of the map. Um, really extended the power and ability of this Rasp, but this Reaper uh, is done now. Link Speed, is, he's got to find himself a cliff. He doesn't find it good enough, doesn't find it soon enough, sees the third base. Kind of knows what he's going up against. And two Hellions over here, at least with the control Future has and his ability to, to maneuver around this front line, is going to make these potentially dangerous. Um, it does look like Egg's Double Queen is going to push back, push back this Hellion fight for now. He comes over to the third base. I mean, a free free poke of damage, but <laughs> those Hellions would have to sit there for uh, a considerable amount of time. Egg's soaring a, a few lings up the top because he's going to do a, a run by over on the natural base while these Hellions are, are out on the map. Uh, four more Hellions looking to join the fight now. With these four Hellions on the battlefield, uh, it does change, just change the significantly the, the damage and the offensive capabilities Feature has running into the front door. Uh, behind this, looks like he's Push, starting to push out a couple more marines. He's got stem on the way. Another barracks being created. Looking for a third base. Uh, takes right up the ramp. Uh, this is a lot. Uh, this is a lot of uh, a lot of hellions and a lot of drones ready to be fried. Seven in one blast. Nine more or nine total. Eleven going up. Queens are really trying to push this off. Only a handful of hellions uh, left behind. But I guess half the hellions left behind. But they are really getting their damage out. Uh, there's another drone barbecue, 13 total loss, 14 total, the number keeps climbing up, trying to get one more shot out, 15 drones for, uh, 15 drones for, was that, six or, six, I think it was six Hellions right there, uh, fantastic amount of damage, puts him in a good spot to push forward, uh, 
Eggs has to get over here and do a little bit of counter damage, but the wall is up. And the command center in a, in a great position uh, to block the handful of incoming lings. Um, there's one SCV. I love it. Hero SCV holding the gap right here. Now oh, the command center did take a little bit of damage. Um, it is repairable. It is bulky. It will survive a continued onslaught over here. Okay. okay, plus one, plus one for future on the way. Looks like he's switching into full bio. He's starting to turn out one tank at a time. Combat shields for the Marines. Uh, five Marines at a time, two medevacs. Uh, in a few moments, this is going to become a a very difficult to deal with army, especially with future behind him maneuvering and getting the positions he needs with the tanks. He's just got to keep this orbital command alive for a little bit, get himself, get himself a forward position with those tanks, and he'll be able to secure that third base. On the other side of the map, the eggs over here, He's got himself a, a almost fully saturated mineral, at least mineral-wise, on his third base. Second base is fully saturated. He's working on about two and three quarters of the base, really getting that economy up. Going to be very dangerous uh, as soon as he starts to turn on the the unit button here. And so the drone button, a handful of links, trying to poke around, keeping the information current for future. The split of these Marines is fantastic. Sending him across the map in different directions. Moving this army, looks like he wants to come up here on the third base location and kind of cement in, get a handful of volleys. And a lot of damage here with these marines. We're talking combat shields about to finish plus one plus one. The timing on this attack is going, going to be devastating his opponent. Uh, no upgrades. Uh, only plus one carapace on the way. Handful of roaches. This is going to be a devastating push here. Now the queen's having to back up. Marines stems forward. A couple marines going down, but the tanks are sieged now. Uh, in a in kind of backed into a corner here. The drones have been pulled. The queens are trying to, to get this done. Uh, the drones actually look like they're going to take out this tank. First tank goes down, a handful of marines left, one tank can support. The damage, however, uh, is absolutely massive. Take a look at the unit's loss tab. It's uh, significantly in Future's favor here between the drones, between the roaches, and the lings. It just went down to that attack, but he's got to get out of there. He doesn't want to overstay his welcome. He wants to take this advantage and continue to run with it. It does look like Eggs wants to cut him off. A little bit of a split here, sending one tank back home for the defense. Uh, this I love this run by a handful of links over here while the army's away. Uh, the Marines coming in, going to continue to clear up this creep. Uh, tank sieging up. I'm going to push those away. A couple SCVs lost for the trouble. Future picks up. And I, I love this. He sends the he sends the tank back home. The tank is sustained offensive later on. But these handful of Marines stay in the front. They're going to continue to kill... Uh, Clear out creep. Medevac gives them a lot of mobility. With roaches and ravagers on the battlefield, this medevac is pretty safe as long as it stays out of the reach of the queens. It looks like he's going to lose a couple of a couple of those marines there before he's able to pick them up. But he does clear out the front of this creep. Very important for the Terran to keep his mobility to counter mobility here for his opponent. Uh, Future over here doing a fantastic job of securing this third base. Uh, the supply depot in, in are in fantastic positions to, to prevent run buys. It uh, looks like he's going to take the third base up in the alternate third, or the fourth base in the alternate third base location, and he's continuing to pump out this bio force army. Now, Roach Ravager count climbing up in the production tab. Uh, it's Roaches, it's Baneling Nest, it's more upgrades uh, for both players. Some sensor towers going down. It looks like two tanks at a time, plus two, plus two on its way. Plus one vehicle attack also on its way for future. They're gearing up for a very powerful mid game. Both of them trying to position themselves, find themselves the op optimal avenues to engage from. All right, roaches moving around, clearing out, uh, clearing there, at least getting vision on and, and keeping pace around the southern part of the map. It does look like future is going to pull back that that forward force now. Roach is moving up, though. Uh, this is a this is a non say a non-zero threat coming down the bottom side here. All right, a handful of banelings being brought in to help support this. That'll be good in controlling and in kind of blocking off the Marine movement. If he gets those in the right positions, at a minimum, the, the Marines can engage the way they're going to want to engage. This force here, uh, growing and growing in threat. This is going to be a blob of, of Roach Ravager, Ling Bane, and they are, they are converging 
on each other, bringing in more and more to make this one giant push. All right. Little bit of lag from one of the observers. There we go. I do love this sensor tower here for early warning systems. Planetary Fortress up to to get by him sometime. Does look like Egg splitting up his force. Not necessarily decisively engaging or, or choosing an attack path. It does look like the scan pulled him back. Um, kind of on his back foot. Egg seems to be incredibly defensive with an army that, that could put some damage down. Now, that being said, these are a lot of tanks. It's five, six tanks covering that third base. And the, this force not... It looks like it, it's going to get collapsed in on. Um, Future is going to need to pick this up as soon as the full threat of this is realized. And he's going to get out of there with those medevacs. And it does look like the roaches split up on the forces. Uh, split up their forces. Trying to find alternate avenues to get in here. But the tank coverage is absolutely deep. The vision with these sensor towers gives him a lot of uh, reactability. Alright, Future... Uh, dropping his marines back here in the south, splitting up, getting some creep spread kill over here. I love this future in multiple places, still uh, able to push and defend on these locations, get some damage done over here, but he did, did look like he took a handful of losses uh, on both sides of this fight. The multitasking is amazing, but the, the bulk of the force, the bulk of the power for the future is going to be in these tanks. It's this defense, and he, he is absolutely preparing for the turtle. Uh, as I imagine, these defenses are going to get more and more decisive uh, unless he pulls his tanks forward for the engagements, uh, removing removing the defensive power he has back at home. He's not going to have the army he needs to engage you know, these roaches directly. So he's definitely playing the game at home, trying to get something done with these marines, but he hasn't been horribly aggressive. This has kind of allowed the, the Zerg you see on the minimap to take up the entire left side of the field here. All right, looks like Egg's trying to find the right angle to to approach into this. Doesn't want to run into the tank wall. Liberator's now forcing, forcing, uh, acting as a forcing function, trying to create and craft the battlefield in favor of the Terran. Um, some weak areas over here that could be collapsing on, but the tanks are slowly being brought forward. Uh, the Marines again at the front line here, taking out a handful of roaches, a small pocket of them. Looks like they're going to try to focus down a handful of these hatchers keep the economy as limited as possible from his opponent it looks like corruptors will be entering the battlefield soon taking a quick look <laughs> we don't miss any of this action but that spire is mutating over in the main base uh upgrades plus twos and plus threes uh, happening everywhere a handful of corruptors now uh, maneuvering they're going to be a, a great counter uh, for some of these air assets maybe push back the, the the medevac and the aggressiveness of the terran but future slowly moving forward uh, with this great tank line, even the rear of it's going to be hard to collapse in on. Uh, the Marines coming forward, trying to engage, being back into the, the, the Liberation Zones where they want to fight. From the rear, uh, Banelings, Roaches, Ravagers coming in on these tanks, getting some uh, fantastic engagements. And it looks like Future's kind of on the back foot here. Um, but <laughs> take a quick look at the army supply. Um, that's not actually true. Uh, Future... Most of it, a uh, very commanding army presence, might be entirely built into these liberators. Going to have a hard time claiming ground, but getting these broodlords, eliminating the, uh, eliminating the, the, that threat, eliminating the corruptors, uh, going to go a long way. As, as we're actually seeing liberators engaging in air-to-air -air combat here, tanks uh, unseaged and moving over, trying to support a little bit on the ground army, uh, but the liberators starting to take a commanding. There it is, a commanding lead here. There it is six liberators still pushing the fight. One corruptor on the, at a time here to defend the broodlords. Uh, looks like that. Looks like a little bit of injecting going on over here. While that's happening, uh, it's going to be planetary fortress liberation zone marine fights happening on this side of the map. Um, gotta love the use of these liberators. They're so low. They're they're, they're just a, a breath away from dying. Um, but just the commanding presence, the the number of them here. Uh, while while eggs has such limited anti-air capacities, letting them do a lot of damage. Now, heroes of that fire are now really preventing a a hard swap, or at least delaying the hard swap into broodlords. Broodlords become a much more uh, devastating force uh, once they start entering the battlefields in numbers, especially with this composition that Future's running right now. Uh, but this is definitely uh, a hell of a back and forth game. 
Eggs down about 55 supply right now. Uh, most of that actually in army and and economy. It does look like futures set to outpace them. They're building up quite a bank. Uh, 1,600 minerals, 2,000 gas in the bank. Able to, to remake what he needs to remake. Uh, but then we have broodlords. A couple of broodlords in the back. More corruptors being made. Crackling, crackling attack. Just about to, to finish up. About halfway done. Uh, down here in the third base location. Looks like we had a little bit of a skirmish. A quick run by. Ten... Actually, 10 SCVs, very important here, kind of evening up the the economic uh, the economic window, the economic future, future's economic future, trying to even that fight out. Egg's still a little bit behind on the drone count. Uh, a lot of corruptors in this fight right now. Liberators sieging up on the low ground. Marines coming in from the bottom. Uh, it does look like the uh, Ravagers in position to do a lot of damage on those Liberators. More Liberation Zones being brought into the fight. Lings, not Lings, uh, Marines moving forward, uh, trying to clear out the air. And again, the, the army of eggs, um, almost entirely here in Broodlords and Corruptors. Strong tier 3 units that are very hard to deal with in these numbers, especially without the the full anti-air capacity to push back those Liberators. A couple of Vikings come in to, to try to even this fight out. Looks like they're going to do significant amounts of damage to these Corruptors. Uh, I love the I love the heals coming from the Queen down there, keeping that one Corruptor alive keeping an anti-air threat, because without the Corruptors, uh, these Broodlords are open season. Uh, looks like the Liberator sieging up again, going to take care of that Queen. Vikings doing what they can to keep the uh, Corruptor count low. Marines walking across the battlefield, trying to, to even out the ground force of this game. A handful of Marines really change change this dynamic here, as Vikings and Liberators continue to, to pound away. This becomes this becomes an air battle. We are doing a Zerg Air Force v, v Terran Air Force here. Uh, the combination of the Broodlords and Corruptors uh, in the right numbers, really keeping eggs alive here at this moment. Uh, 158 supply to 107, slowly edging out in slightly more and more efficient fights. There's the GG. Infinity Gaming takes game number two. Ladies and gentlemen, GGs to be had all around. Uh, we have ourselves a fantastic series so far. Uh, looks like up next is Cham versus Jamelian. Uh, Black Knight, Black Knight Esports pulling out a uh, a real hitter here. Uh, Cham is currently eight to one uh, for Alpha Team League representing the Black Knights. Uh, Jamelian um, looks like doesn't have a it does not have a, a record we were able to define for this season so really the favorite here is cham looks like black knights uh throwing in a hard hitter uh hoping to stay in this game they lose uh, one more and that is the end of this series and infinity gaming will move on and black knights will be disqualified but stay tuned we'll get right into that after this short b -b 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 break
Ladies and gentlemen, we're on King's Cove in the top left hand corner. The Blue Zerg representing Black Knight Esports. It is Cham. His opponent, the bottom right hand side representing Infinity Gaming. It is Jamilion. You're watching the Afrika TV Alpha Team League Cup semifinals first match between Black Knights and Infinity Gaming. Alright, so this is going to be a nice little ZVP. And what I usually see here about this time is this probe comes over and make sure that this is no no rush. Um, this is not a, there's not going to be something knocking at my door, but uh, knocking at his door, especially with this large wall. And he's got some decisions to make on how fast he, he completes his wall. Uh, but it looks like Jamillion is either confident in his defense or confident in his knowledge of his opponent. Cham did go hatch first. It does not look to be... Uh, immediate threats to his wall. And we'll see if it plays out that way all the way through. Um, does look like Jamillion looking to get his tech up, get his strategy working as fast as possible. Actually, let me... Do, did I... There we go. All right, so uh, getting that gateway research, getting the adept out first, securing that second base. Cham will see the open wall, open-ish wall, easily blocked out now. Nothing's going to, to get in there if he doesn't want it to. Uh, and it looks like Cham's going to take that opportunity to take a third base. Both, these, both of these players kind of powering up to their game plan uh, right off the bat here. Nothing super aggressive, a little bit of trust, and it looks like a robo first out of Jamillion. It's like a uh, reminds me of like a like a, like Jamal, but it's but it's an Eevee, right? Like so, it's the evolution of Eevee that requires you know whatever it is that 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 whatever stone Jamal has. No. Yes, we're good. We're gonna go with that. All right. <laughs> it looks like uh, this Overlord is gonna dive in here, see as much as it can see, but the Stalker uh, it is gonna sacrifice its life for the effort. Uh, over here, the Adept doing the same thing. Both these opponents scouting each other out, trying to. F Trying to get an idea for the game plan, making sure there's no hidden tech. Uh, you know, hiding hiding with the rest of the space. That uh, robotics facility pumping out uh, pumping out its first unit. Looks like he wants to go across the other side of the map. Um, and do a little bit of harassment. Alright, more gateways being brought in. Really pumping up that... Uh, really pumping up the base level, you know, tier 1 unit production capabilities, and it does look like the hatchery being mutated over here for Cham, the Roach Worm going down. Um, looks like a good timing for, for a nice, strong, like, Roach Ravager. Coming out of this, you get Roach Speed. Now, no, no plus one, so maybe just relying on a uh, good number count. Yeah, expanding now for the Vespian Geysers. Uh, on the other side of the map, there's that Observer. There's an Immortal. There it is. So an Immortal production here. Got to get that started. As the Roach Count climbs, you really need to have a healthy number of Immortals to even out that fight. And it does look like the harassment's going to be uh, just kind of the Stalker Sentry push. Maybe another round of Warp Ends. Uh, if he wants to commit a little more to this, but this is a juggleable, harassable unit. Not one we see too often. Just going to pick those back up and, and pull them out as the Lings. You know, gonna gonna be forced to kind of stay home. It's gonna clean up a couple of overlords. You can fight on the low ground here. He is gonna get the. He's gonna actually pull them back behind the mineral line, and these lings are gonna have to split themselves, keep themselves occupied. Now this is great because it keeps them on this side of the map. Jamalian doesn't want doesn't want lings near his base. Doesn't want lings near his um, you know his his probes. Keep that economy safe. Now it, I actually love this. Jamalian do an excellent job of of harassing these overlords. Looks like he's just not going to finish uh, finish off this one. 
forces himself to pull back Queen, putting a little bit of damage down uh, on the Warp Prism here. But this is, you know, this is keeping occupied. This is Cham's keeping Cham at home, keeping Cham defensive. Uh, but behind this, you know, Cham is popping out a healthy number of roaches, prepping up for, for an attack. Uh, looks like the Lings are going to go forward. Uh, find themselves some juicier target over here. A couple of them ran themselves into the into the into the gate over here. Uh, but that is a healthy defense of sentries. This is not necessarily. This is actually an incredibly, incredibly thick number of sentries. I love this wraparound. Um, still not going to find an entry in there uh, with this many sentries. With, with that immortal sitting at the wall here, uh, transformation into the overseer cocoon. To try to give it a little more speed, a little more health, but, but that is a lot of a lot of ground force, a lot of uniquely tactical ground force. The, the ability of these sentries to shape the battlefield could be uh, incredibly useful coming up here in the in the mid game as roaches and ravagers start to push down the front. Now we are getting an infestation pit down, so it looks like either pushing into the next tier uh, rather quickly. Uh, dropping infestors into the into the mix, getting those evolution chambers, kind of ramping up. Now, with with a healthy mid game defense, looking to ramp up to the next tier, Cham is at least comfortable enough now in his ability to kind of shape the battlefield. Uh, these Lings are kind of doing what the uh, Warp Prison was doing before, uh, keeping the army of Jamilians kind of defensive, pulling around, keeping vision, making sure the front door isn't open too wide. And then we're going to see this split here, the Warp Prison. Uh, running off with two immortals, going to do some hara uh, immortal harassment on the other side of the map. All right, handful of zealots are going to be able to tank uh, some pretty good fights here. Uh, <laughs> a lot of phoenixes being sent across the map. I love the double phoenix, almost a mind game with this many sentries. You know, are those real? Are those? You know, do we say we're not sending those for scouting anymore? That's that's kind of a an information. Uh, information management there as the phoenixes come across uh, it should be pretty obvious now that they're not real they're gonna see they're gonna see the size of that army um, it's like going into hydralis den going into hive going into roaches plus one cham's got a plan the fourth base going down really continuing to ramp up that economy staying on top of that drone production but you know, take taking a look at the units Coming across the the map here, uh, a zealot, a mortal stalker, sentry force of uh, plus archons. We're just bringing everything to the fight, boys. Uh, Jamillion here, uh, looking to maybe close out this game. This is this is not this is not a uh, this is not an attack that can just be ignored. Three archons on the map, meeting that engagement. It is it is Roach Ravager versus this fantastic battlefield shaping mix, uh, taking out that fourth base. Now, how does this engage? You know, what does Cham do? Does he come down this ramp and try to engage it on the open field? Does he hold the hold the ramp and the arcs he needs? Uh, Viper on the field now. A handful of Vipers. Hoping to get some pulls. Losing a very expensive unit here. Uh, Cham losing... Uh, potentially a uh, very difficult battle for him to face. This ramp, these these four shields really shape the ramp. Uh, give a little bit of an edge to Jamalian, but he's still, he is still fighting up, up a ramp. Trying to do his best to work himself through a choke point, but the positioning here of Cham isn't. Um, I actually, did, before I get myself too far, too far ahead, rooting for the guy running up the ramp. The army and the supply differences are kind of telling a story. Drones have been pulled; they're getting into the mix. Roaches, Ravagers, uh, doing a fantastic job. Some great Ravager hits here from Cham. Uh, another round of warp ends. The Immortal still alive, still being very punishing. Uh, very close back and forth match here. Uh, the overlords being pulled to soak up a little bit bit of that damage some stalkers in the mix um, shooting up rather than engaging on the front lines cham getting the pull on the immortal sniping that some very low a very low immortal left on the front lines here um, kind of worth a dive as they will get the immortal they will chase the army out and cham uh, defender's advantage uh, positioning whatever you want to call it has an advantage and he's chasing it it uh, looks like he's even chasing it back home uh, picking up the Immortal, trying to get a little bit of damage on it. Uh, it is all the way through shields. The armor is starting to get depleted now. Kind of doing this back and forth pickup, trying to slow the army down, trying to regroup. There's the recall and Immortal being pulled from the battlefield uh, back home. It does look like Cham uh, earned himself a little bit of breathing room here. All right, so another 
There's the Warp Prism. There's the army over here at the second base. Handful of Templars on the field now being morphed into Archons just as the, the Force of Cham kind of knocking on that front door, getting a grab. Uh, actually, fantastic response there from the Warp Prism, getting the grab, but pulling it back in, saving that Immortal for this engagement. A handful of Zealots getting charging in, getting that charge damage. Uh, the Force of this army just kind of marching forward, trying to push back uh, this Roach Ravager force. Uh, taking a quick look at the income advantage right now. Uh, swinging a little bit back into Jamelian's favor after a, a long mid-game where Cham was economically ahead. The army size uh, for both armies continuing to climb as they're attempting to maneuver around the battlefield, find themselves the right angle of attack, find themselves the the right one-two punch. Now this is a relatively small force of champs, but a great counter, a great punch at the third base when most of the army is forward trying to be aggressive. As soon as he sees and locates this army, I, I have no doubt these roaches come in and try to clean up the third base. Uh, vision and positioning in champs' favor again on, on this ramp. Uh, and this is still a very scary force from Jameleon. Now down here in the third base, it does look like he... he he jumped in, the Roach is dealing significant amounts of damage, 14 probes going down, it looks like he's going to lose that base as Jamelian trying to find the angle, uh, the angle of which to go up. Uh, there is a Yank, it does look like the Archon going to fall very quickly. Fantastic use of those Vipers, great control uh, coming out of Cham here. Now, this base continuing under Assault here uh, kind of puts... Jamelian in a in a very difficult position. He needs to get to either get a significant amount of damage done. Uh, well, he has to get a significant amount of damage done. He can't just fall back and clean up those roaches. He's already he's going to start falling behind economically. He's going to start falling behind uh, on his ability to produce. Uh, lost so much in that in that in that attack back at his own base. He's got to get in here and, and find a way to get some damage done. Handful of immortals and archons uh, pumping it, pumping it out. Roaches, ravagers moving forward to throwing down some fantastic bile hits. Uh, it does look like Cham absolutely carrying carrying this fight so many bruised immortals here uh, the pickups trying to keep them alive gets the warp prism that attack is is not going to uh not going to be too much more persistent but there is a lot of dangerous protoss units out on this battlefield um and this army of cham is a little split so and jamelian getting a, a Getting the kind of damage that we were talking about him needing to get, um, evening out, taking away the the larva production capabilities. Uh, there is going to be a bit of a wraparound here in the roaches from the third. Uh, they were on the, on the other side of the map coming in, closing off, and looking like cleaning up the last remnants of that push. Uh, poor Immortal here walking across the map. It does look like Cham is going to take the first win for Black Knight Seasports. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to get into game number four for the Africa TV ATL Cup. Again, we'd like to just take a moment, thank our sponsors and everything they do to uh, help support this and make this possible. We're going to take a quick moment and uh, show you a little bit about what they have to offer over at 24 Hour Fitness. say any of those I didn't say any of those words because I was absolutely muted we're here a bunch of professionals ladies and gentlemen we'll be right back with game number four which should be 
It will be between Mick Monroe and Taron. Uh, Mick Monroe takes this. He'll take it for the team. They'll move on to the semifinals. Taron has a chance to push this into the ace match where both teams will resurrect one of their players. Let's hit that BRB button one more time. I'll see you after a short break.
ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cyber Forest. On the bottom right hand corner in the light purple. Subbing in for Mick Monroe, it is Johnny Rico. That's off. Left hand corner representing Black Knight Esports, the Red Terran. It is Terran. If you weren't aware already, you're watching the Africa TV ATL Cup. Get in there, get on Matcharino, use the code Africa TV Cup to add a free 50 cents to the prize pool. Show your support for a fantastic league with a fantastic group of players and admin team and everybody that makes these things possible. Show your love, show your support. Get on out there. Open up your, your fingers. No wallets necessary for your 50 cent code. <laughs> All right, so we're taking a quick look at this. Uh, Taryn. Looks like he's opening up Reaper Fast Expand on the bottom, and we got a hatch first out of out of Johnny Rico. I know uh, nothing super aggressive so far in in any of these games. All the players kind of having this respectful, um, at least slow, non cheese style openers. We're seeing bases being built inside of bases. We're seeing hatcheries open hatchery openings. No proxy pylons. Both these players really relying on their their capabilities, their their strengths. They say, we got this, we don't need crazy tricks. I can take out this player on my own. Uh, this first Reaper coming across, going right up that ramp. All right, a little bit of scouting information. Uh, gonna get to harass a drone for a little bit. The Lings are going to do their best to chase this away. Uh, on creep, they have a pretty good job. Looks like the Reaper just gets away, uh, getting doesn't look like he made any... Got any? Wait, did I, Is there a drone? Did, I, did he already get a drone? Wait a minute. Units lost. No, he did. Okay, he did not get a drone. It just repairs itself over time. Um, quick third base, though, from Johnny Rico. Has been scouted by the Reaper. Comes up there. Gonna get pushed away by the Queen. And said Lynx. Alright. Starport double... Double, not double racks. No, yeah, it's just landing out. One, 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 getting out with the handful of Hellions. Uh, these Hellions, as we've seen, can get a significant amount of damage done on the other side of the field. The first two, kind of zoning out and harassing. You know, the next four that join the fight really command a command a presence. If they get in on the on the drone line, can you know, significantly hurt the economy of the of the Zerg player. Uh, so this is kind of this. You know, how do you how do you handle this as a Zerg? You know, the answer is. Good creep spread. It's going to be, you know, uh, good control of your queens. Being able to move from base to base with this connected creep. So this first set of Hellions. Uh, and this Reaper are going to actually get in and, and stop the, the spread of creep over here to the to the fourth base location. They're going to come around the top of the ramp, uh, looking to find a place to deal a little bit of damage. But this force needs to be a little bigger to contend with kind of these two queens patrolling this area. A handful of lings at the top of the ramp, ready to collapse in. Now the numbers are getting a little little bigger. More Hellions on the way. Two more. Six makes this a very dangerous number. They can slide back here and start putting down a significant amount of drone damage. Uh, coming in, poking. I love this zoning. They're watching. They're aware kind of, of, of things moving right up the middle. Two more Hellions coming in to clear it out. And this, that signif signifies the swap. It looks like we're going to get a, a full swap into bio. Stem on the way, about halfway down. Liberators, uh, first thing popping out of the starport, and it does look like four queens in a fantastic position to try to push this away. The mobility of these Hellions, though, gets them right over here to the top, able to put down a little bit of drone damage. Gets one drone for their trouble. Second drone going down, lings right on top of the back of these Hellions. Hellions having to decide, you know, can they get targeting AI, focusing down these uh, much less valuable lings? So useful, the speed of these lings, keeping up with the Hellions, poking away a little bit of the damage, or having to. Uh, Terran having to, to 
focus and, and target fire his drone choices, sacrificing a lot of Hellions in the process, getting six drones for his trouble, um, but at the cost of 600 minerals. Now, this leaves a uh, nice little opening here, a nice little freedom of maneuver for, for Johnny Rico. So you can come back to the front, see if there's a an accessible wall. It is going to be walled off, the supply depot, blocking, blocking the path here, but um, nothing on the other side... I say nothing on the other side as the tank rolls up to, to shoot and, and push them away. It is going to siege. The repairs are going to keep the supply depots alive. And that tank is going to push away the lings. You do not want to throw away your your lings against the supply depot. Now he is caught. He is creating a little bit of a... He's pulled the drones for a little bit. He's The cost of repairs have gone down. He didn't lose much for it. Uh, this Viking now on the battlefield. Trying to find its place to get some damage. Uh, actually pulling the queens. Also, there's a lot of queens. Six queens uh, out to deal with it. This Liberator might get a little bit of damage done. As the queens are a little bit uh, out of position. Um, seven queens on the battlefield. That is uh, going to easily push away this Liberator. I love the reliance on queens here. They're such a great all, like a full game unit. They're, they're defensive. They're injecting. They're creep spreading. Uh, it does look like Liberator is going to find an angle he wants to use. Uh, Queen getting picked off for its trouble trying to defend the base. Terran finding another location, kind of pulling the defenses in multiple directions. Uh, this Queen is going to start shots as soon as the Liberator sieges up. And, yep, just barely. Liberator surviving with 9 health, preventing a little bit a little bit of mining time here. If he gets out of here for his trouble, gets home and repairs. Now that, that unit's going to be useful in this upcoming push. Handful of marines and some tanks. Looking to move across the map or... Yep, looking to move across the map. Not looking to lock down this third base in any way other than forcing the enemy to answer it back at home. Now this is Once they get into position, this is a, a very difficult force to contend with. Uh, the Zerg really wants to collapse on this at the right moment. Maybe swing in from behind and, and get the tanks in position. These tanks uh, kind of... Uh, like frog hopping forward trying to find you know their optimal positions they want to fight on this high ground they want to be able to pull fire to the low ground a handful of banelings here looking to connect and, and change the dynamic of this fight uh stutter stepping backwards trying not to get surrounded by lings uh looks like a couple pieces of target fire on the on the banelings uh not quite enough as a couple of tanks go down unseaging uh being picked up by the ooh, great save there by the tank uh, a damage tank still pops out full damage as the medevac picks it up, saves its life, the marines overextending just a little bit. Those queens, so many queens, so many transfuses keeping them alive. Uh, as these, these tanks are, are struggling to stay upright. Uh, these queens doing a fantastic job of, of tanking all this damage. Lings get again, resetting the tank. Uh, resetting the tank numbers. Uh, fantastic response there from Johnny Rico. The use of these queens... Uh, to push away liberators, to spread the creep, to keep their index going, and then just brings them in for the defense. Absolutely pushes back what could have been a devastating attack. All right, one medevac in the middle with the three remaining marines that slaughter of a fight, taking a look at the army supply. Uh, looks, like, you know, give or take about the same amount of supply. Uh, the army favors the Terran, both sitting on plus one, plus one upgrades. Um... Uh, Johnny getting a, a bit of a, a uh, I guess, an economic advantage. But their army's neck and neck. Uh, another force coming down here for Terran. And this wall finally going down. As Hydra's join the fight, uh, the ability to shoot up the massive uh, range and damage they can output. Uh, about to get even bigger. It's plus two, plus two on the way for the Zerg. Plus two, plus two just now starting up. There will be a window of upgrade advantage. Uh, for Johnny Rico. As it looks like he's trying to find an angle to push in, but Johnny's got a lot of the map covered. All right, the Liberator, seven kills uh, earlier in the game. So four earlier in the game, three right now as it's maneuvering around the back. It does keep the Queens occupied and off the front line. Um, but they really want him out of position. Takes one more Queen out and falls to, to the other three. So we're getting two pushes now. Uh, with medevacs coming into the main base as a drop. Downloading just inside the range. The Ling's responding uh, quickly to try to minimize the amount of damage here. Uh, there's the stem forward. Getting a, a little bit of creep. Getting a baneling. Uh, gonna have to push away. That good response for Rico. Uh, getting this around there. On the other hand, getting another set of marines up here. This is creep clearing territory. He's gotta keep this creep 
clean. He's got to keep uh, the mobility and the visibility are to a minimum. All right. All right, Taren doing a pretty good job of, of maneuvering around there. This is the force, though. This is the push. These tanks have to find themselves some great volleys. Some pre-splits from the Marines will go a long way. Clearing out this hatchery uh, with a quick stem. We are dealing with uh, approximately, yeah, we've got three tanks and a handful of Marines. Great medevac support, but you know, not a lot of Liberators to help shape the battlefield. I think one, all the Liberators have been used for harassment. Uh, those will be, he's going to go forward, stem forward, pull back. That is a lot of bailings. He doesn't want that to connect. Does look like Johnny Rico going around the back trying to find a wraparound. As soon as the Marine uh, Marines overextend, this should collapse in on the uh, on the bottom, doing a lot of damage. But Taren picking up and taking the fight also to the main base, going to force Johnny Rico to divide his forces even more. And with the tank support in the background, he can he can afford to do this. So they dropped in the main base. There are <laughs> there are the Ultralisks uh, coming into the fight here. Now these are uh, they are upgraded for it looks like speed, not for armor quite yet. Uh, armor on the way. Uh, you can see the health. Uh, they can be focus fired when they're in this stage, but they're still a force to be reckoned with as the bulk of the army will push them out, but they'll just pick up and go over to the main base, continue to get damage on this side. Uh, just a handful of queens to defend this, and as soon as this army wraps around, it takes a long way to get into this base. This is a force he can just pick up and continue to do damage. You know, he is focusing down. He does he does deny tightness plating. He denies the, the ultralisk. It's going to be immediately remade. That resets the clock. On, on the upgrade, on that defense, really depowers the Ultralis. Six uh, drones being taken down at the same time. Uh, quick look at the unit's loss tab. Uh, this is like, like all the more efficient fights coming from the Terran. Slight worker advantage, economic advantage. Um, in Johnny's favor, though, sliding in the other direction thanks to that en recent engagement, and the army size is staying kind of on par. This wraparound attack, though, from the Zergs, Coming into the other side, I love this preposition. You, you find out where the army's at, you try to engage them with your main force, you back them up, and then you send this force crashing into the third base. Um, or even in the opposite fashion, send that, that run around, pull the army in another direction. Both these players operating on multiple multiple dimensions and pushing armies to the north, to the south. Uh, great multi -tack. I love this. We've got a, a force appear, a force appear, ready to collapse in once the once the army has been identified, once the location has been identified, a swarm host in the mix. <laughs> Whether that's a, a, a mistake or a, a diversion, we'll, we'll see how he uses this thing. Uh, love, love the composition, though. Ling, Bane, Hydra, Ultra, swarm host. Trying to take that sixth base, fifth base? Fifth base up there. Uh, another force down here, ready to defend. Actually, it's just like a small, small contingent of Ultras. Uh, tightness plating has been restarted. It does look like he's going to pick up and back off, not engaging, throwing away the army. We do have another drop coming over here. Again, I love this from, from Taran. A uh, small contingent of Marines is going to pull. Looks like a uh, majority of the, you know, that main army button. And he's going to get the medevac for his trouble. Two drones for a full medevac. Completely worth it as they drop in again, focusing down, denying tightness plating a second time. Uh, keeping that, keeping the Ultralist from, from reaching this, this scary capacity. Uh, and what do you do here as, as Johnny Rico? You drop it twice, you drop it in two locations. Uh, and the, these, these forces we talked about earlier planted and waiting for the attack did collapse in on that third base. Looks like the drones were pulled, not getting a significant amount of, uh, not, not drones, SCVs were pulled, not getting a significant amount of economic damage over there. Um, and that, and identifying the location of the main force, it does look like it's trying to push out, um, you see on the production tab, plus three, plus three, about to finish up. Corruptors, seven corruptors about to come out, and the brood, the capacity to make broodlords about to finish up for Johnny Rico. Coming down here on the southern side, Rolly Boys trying to find a home. That is a lot of tanks and a lot of marauders. Uh, a lot of meat in this army go a long way towards... Uh, collapsing into this force it's going to be about it's going to be about the engagement either one of these forces takes the fight uh, but you don't want to lose your banelings like that you want to get some explosions collapsing in on uh, you don't want to lose this base a lot of mining time 
being decisively denied here. Plus three, plus three on both sides of the fence. Cloak being researched uh, for Taren. Looks like he's going uh, parallel paths for upgrades. Uh, pulling back a bit. Uh, looks like to engage uh, this small contingent over here. Kind of leaving his, his tanks exposed for a moment. He is regrouping, pulling these things together. The force of Johnny Rico moving up to the north. Trying to find the right angle to collapse in on his opponent. Um, you see the the armies kind of doing this dance back and forth. I love I love the Terran in the scenario though. He's got the sensor towers up. He can see major movements. He's scanning. He's keeping his intelligence fresh. He's got a full understanding of the capabilities of his opponent's army. The queens. I love this moving with the majority of the army now. That this creep spread is is taking into the middle of the base. Doing another split of, of links here, trying to get a wrap right now. The main force will be able to quickly respond, spawn to this push, and this planetary force just should push this away. Uh, right up the front, sending in uh, <laughs> a handful of overlords. Uh, they're going to drop their changelings. Try to join in. Try hey guys, we're here to... Nope, denied. Absolutely, I, I, it always amazes me how quickly changelings get denied in an army. You have to be, really be on top of your game. You're really seeing the the ability here of that player and I love the banelings uh, splitting in here jumping in on a couple supply depots not quite getting the connections they want but drones on the other side actually drones on the other side falling to liberators uh, as this army collapses kind of forces the hand giant rico's got to get in here get some damage and he's collapsing on both sides quite fantastically but will it be enough ultralist over here taking the shots of the planetary fortress banelings coming in not making the best connection broodlords doing a significant amount of damage uh, keeping a, a watch at the army supply is almost the only way to see who's who's taking the decisive engagement here. It's dropping uh, as Terran's starting to lose some uh, a lot of very expensive units. These ghosts, however, uh, completely completely hidden. There is no there is no detection, no vision, um, and this planetary putting out so much damage. Twenty eight kills uh, d defending against broodlords and and corruptors. Links coming in. It does finally fall. The SCP is trying to get away down here to the south. Uh, looks like a very strong engagement here from Johnny Regal. He could close this out for Infinity Gaming. Prevent Black Knights from seeing a game five and, and resurrecting their best players. Broodlords being brought back up to handle a handful of Marines trying to push the issue on this side of the map. 33, 33 SCVs uh, going down for the trouble. If it, if it wasn't for these hero liberators on this side of the map, uh, this would have been absolutely devastating for Terran, sending those very key units, hero units, getting so much damage done uh, to the economy of the opponent. Uh, and actually, this planetary force is really, really lasting, getting a significant amount of damage done. But really, Broodlings, free units, um, getting damage done to things that are easily replaced. Now, this army does need to re recollect Johnny Rico, uh, an army consisting mostly of, of, of Broodlords. It really needs some support. You see in the production tab, uh, not a lot going on with the with the lack of economy. He's got to take a moment, build back up, get some more drones going before he can afford to, to really uh, hit that hit that last one two punch, that last uh, you know back foot back backhand punch back you know, punch a, a strong punch. We'll just, you know one two the two the two part of the one two punch. A uh, handful of links here will go a long way in supporting this main army, uh, especially with a large number. Of ghosts in this fight, uh, Banelings really want to make some good connections. Uh, these ghosts are able to do uh, a lot of damage with their snipes, a lot of damage without vision. And you see Broodlords falling to snipes. Uh, Johnny Rico really needs to get some overseers onto the battlefield, uh, as he's going to get pushed away by a handful of, of Vikings and ghosts that, that really just can't be contested. This is a this is just. I guess, you know, I guess the answer is can't be contested. Fantastic response there from Terran. Uh, holding on with just the right number of units. Um, taking a quick count of things on the board. Uh, there are five overseers. They're just not with the army at the moment. Let's see if we can we'll take it. Oh, there they are. They just jumped in here, recognizing the need for vision. Uh, 24 lings on the way will join this fight. Uh, a handful of baneling morphs would go a long way, but it doesn't look like it'll be too hard to deny this third base one more time. Changeling's moving in. We'll keep an eye on that army. Or at least find it. I love the, like, one link pulls pulls the army uh, over here. These ghosts are going to be key. 
these Terran spellcasters are going to have to make their money. Uh, don't does not want to lose the overseers. Uh, goes go cloak. Now the Ling's getting in there, getting a wraparound, putting a, a fair amount of damage in, but that stutter step ghost, that stutter step marine support, uh, significantly uh, melting away the rest of that army. Ghost, good tier three unit. Um, as he's having to choose between you know, getting the overseers, getting the broodlords, uh, queens in the mix here, having marched all the way across the map on this fantastic creep spread. Uh, it does look like the army of Terran is falling down. 15 supply remaining. There's a the GG. Johnny Rico takes it, and he takes it for Infinity Gaming. Infinity Gaming will go on to the semifinals, and they're going to the semifinals to face off on whoever wins the next series. Stay tuned for that. Um, I guess we'll say the words after a short break. And transition scene. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am 
Uncommon, and I am uncommonly happy to see you. And you're watching the Africa TV Alpha Team League Cup, $300 on the line for between the eight finalists. We just watched one of them get knocked out of the ring. Black Knights Gaming uh, has fallen away, and Infinity Gaming, Black Knight Esports has fallen away, and Infinity Gaming is rising through to the semifinals. We'll be able to catch them on the 25th as they battle it out for that $300 prize pool. Talking about that prize pool, thanks to Matcharino and our partnership, uh, you can go over to the Matcharino page, drop in the code Africa TV Cup, right? Africa TV Cup, and uh, free 50 cents added to that prize pool. That's a fantastic deal as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is possible largely in part to our sponsors and uh would be doing them a disservice if we didn't thank them uh, 24 hour fitness is showing so much love for esports lately uh, be sure to check them out you know, bring your friends and get your results your way with the free fit plan studio classes pools cardio equipment 436 locations a network of clubs all included in your membership try them for free with the seven day pass when you complete one of the sponsor quests you say Hey, Uncommon, what are these sponsor quests? What do you what do you keep talking about? Well, friends, you go to that Matcharino page, and we'll see, we got, we got a button for you right here. Bam, look at that transition screen. That's hot. ATL Africa TV Cup on Matcharino. Page looks like this. Sponsor quest, come down here, 24 Hour Fitness. Follow them on Twitter. Subscribe to them on YouTube. You're adding money to this prize pool for free. Uh, you sign in. Let's see, sign in on Twitch. All right, there we go. Sign in on Twitch. You can contribute. Coupon code Freaka TV Cup. Oh, don't want that quite yet. Freaka TV Cup, put that in. Um, and you too can add money to the prize pool. That being said, you heard the countdown, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the game number one. This is going to take place between Starkiller and B. It's, there are monsters on the line right now. I'll see you in game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Year Zero. On top. Left hand corner, the blue Zerg representing the 3D clan. It is B. His opponent, the top right hand corner representing Alpha X, the pizza pie monster. It is Star Killer. You're watching Africa ATL's of uh, Alpha Team League's Africa TV Cup. The eight best clans bringing you the eight best fights. The eight, eight, eight best series? I guess really with the eight best teams, we're going to get you know seven series, but it feels like eight it feels as valuable as eight um all right taking a quick look around we've seen uh, actually this is going to be our first spawning pool first out of uh, out of a zerg yet and it, it does look like it was mimicked on both sides so spawning pool first out of out of these out of both zergs uh, this might i think this is actually yeah this is our first uh, zbz of the day both of these players trying to bring it trying to bring the aggression bring the hype this is, this is actually like going to be. I love both these players. We're bringing you the talent. We're bringing you some really awesome matchups. 3D B Alpha X is Star Killer. Uh, so the top players on both these teams. Now looking ahead at the matchups, uh, you're going to get to watch Lightweight versus Light. It's a light on light battle there. You're going to watch Ghost Hell versus Estrella. Estrella, uh, another very strong contender. It's going to be a ZVP. And if we make it to game number four, it's going to be Zipper the Fly versus Uzi Cody. Now, who both these players decide to to bring up for a for an ace match? You know, if I if I'm a betting man, we will see 
this game number one, you know, you know repeated again. Uh, you see Starkiller sitting out a handful of lings uh, in multiple directions, uh, gathering information, disguising disguising the aggression. More lings on the way uh, for Starkiller. Consistent production actually so far. Looks like he's done on three drones. Uh, 3DB noting the the lack of a third base. Uh, third base actually being scouted out there by Starkiller, but opting instead to go for a, for a throat. Uh, for uh, B having to having to cancel. Having to cancel that, get his money back, he, you know, kind of like realizing this attack is coming right now. Uh, but on the other hand, Starkiller really needs to pump out some damage. Uh, he gets, there we go, two queens for his trouble. And there it is. There's the backup. The Link's coming to, to oh, looks looks like maybe finish this off here. Spreading out the Link's, taking care of the, the enemy Link's, taking care of the inc uh, increasingly devastating uh, attack here on the drones. 16 drones. Um, every moment this continues, uh, just further and further being set behind 3DB uh, with a handful of lings in the counterattack here. He's got to get across the other side of the map, do similar amounts of damage, um, or he's going to be uh, forever behind uh, and very vulnerable to follow-up attacks. Uh, this is kind of the, the last moment here. Three, uh, Star Killer, two queens in the red, a handful of lings looking to push this back. This spine crawler gets up. It's going to be a very hard wall to push into. Uh, the ling advantage uh, is only going to last for a few more seconds as 14 more lings left to come up. 24 to 15 worker lead out of Star Killer. He knew when to, to pump out the drones. A little bit of a little bit of lag right there. Star Killer is going. Looks like he's going to continue to push the attack, continuing to drone up behind this at the same time, maintaining that, you know, worker league, uh, worker lead. Now B has done nothing short of a fantastic job of getting his worker count up from 11 back up to 19 into something that keeps him into this fight. Um, but will it be enough? Star Killer opting for both a layer uh, and upgrades right now, pushing into the ramp. Uh, actually, take, looks like he's going right for the for the natural base. Pulling at just the right moment. Try, try not to get surrounded here. He has the Ling advantage, but not the defensive uh, defender's advantage. Coming up here, opting to go um, opting to go into into the drone line, trying to get a couple more kills for his trouble. Um, but overall, that looks like a defended attack. Pretty well held by Forstalling. He is still behind 31 workers to 19. He's going to go across Looks like he wants to continue to find some damage on the other side of the map. Uh, the defenses here are growing, however. It is he's using this advantage, Starkiller using this advantage to make a transition uh, into the Roach War. And double Evo Chambers is really going to make this possible. This wall, this plus one upgrade um, for Stalin. Kind of in this weird position where he's, he's got to either transition and be a little bit behind in the Roach War. Or find, find damage, find an alternate path, you know, get up the... Maybe plus one melee out of these lings, um, but this right now with what he's got here is, is a near unbreakable wall, and I think Star Killer knows this. He's taking this time here to pop out some more queens, pop out that road speed, really secure this mid-game threat that he's going to become. And you can see down here, forestalling, popping up a third base. He knows he's got Star Killer kind of behind the wall, but he's also on a countdown. He's got to get his worker count up. He's, he's really got to get his larva production going. He needs to have an overwhelming number of lings. Um, and or his own larva production for roaches to just stand a fight here. And it looks like he did opt to throw down the roach war, and he's not going to have the upgrade advantage. Starkiller has earned that, but he is trying to sneak out the, the larva advantage. Quick look back here. He is going to keep this wall, it looks like, and, and make this a nidus attack. Build up those constant queen and roach productions between now and the completion of this uh, this. Nidalist network, and he's in a pretty good position to, to pop in the back door and do uh, and just kind of walk in and deal devastating amounts of damage. We've taken a look at the unit count: four queens, five roaches, with uh, two more queens and, and many more roaches on the way. There's the worm; it has been completed. Nidalist network being called in the main base here is going to be spotted immediately. But does it matter? Is there enough to contest it? Does he let this come and, and try to trade bases? Queen's tr maybe trying to get into position here. Soon more roaches of his own on the way. But the queens are massive. The count is... What is that? Six, <laughs> six queens on the battlefield. Uh, the lings that were sitting on the other side of the map trying to come back. 
and, and save the day here, but that is a lot of a lot of drones piled up. Uh, actually going right for the Nice Worm, trying to, to get that thing down, but the Queens are going to transfuse it. It doesn't take enough health to follow. This is a, a now a constant available path, attack path, uh, for the Nidus Worm. Everything's going to be rallied into it. This is Starkiller going for the throat. The Queens march down the ramp in such massive numbers. More keep coming. He taps out. B says GG, and Starkiller takes the match. And a decisive a decisive attack with the with the initial lings paving the way and the opening uh, for a nice attack with with upgraded roaches uh, a decisive win there from star killer our next match is going to be lightweight versus light that's going to be a pvp i will see you after the short break
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, right now, this moment, we're at Port Alexander. And on the bottom right-hand corner, the red Protoss, representing Alpha X. It is light. His opponent on the top left hand corner the blue Protoss representing 3D clan it is lightweight and these names won't be confusing at all ladies and gentlemen you're watching the Alpha Team League Afrika TV Cup we're in the second series between 3D clan and Alpha X game number two in this best of five Coming up next is Ghost Hell versus Estrella, and if we make it to a game four, we'll see Zipper the Fly versus Uzi Cody. Right now, I love I love watching a good PvP. I tell you, because it's like it's mirror. The meta just screams at you as you watch each of these players move down the chain of, of decision making. Uh, their first couple moves, not only are their moves the same, but their Sim Cities usually match up pretty well. It won't surprise me if I come down here. Yeah, and that Cybernetics core is, is pushed just a far, uh, you know, a bit back. You know, not connecting into the into the double gateway opening. Both these players, you know, on to gas. Um, you know, a little bit more gas being mined out of light. That back pylon over here is going to hide the, the tech switch. At least just for a little bit. Keep it away from the wall. I'm just kind of getting into a rhythm. A -pa, a, -a, -pa -va pa rhythm, the PvP rhythm. Uh, now this is where we get that usually that first divergence here in a good PvP. It's a stalker. Oh nope, never mind. It is double stalker going into that Stargate tech. Um, so both these players really just kind of they got a plan, they got a path, and it's it's the same thing at the moment. Uh, Light looking to expand over here. Dropping, I love that. Dropping the pylon. Uh, light, light, look, wait, wait a minute, let me get all my, my pylons right, so yeah, light looking to expand, lightweight, doing what he can to stop it, and that's going to slow down production a little bit, now does light go back and take his natural base as planned, and being a little bit behind, does he pump out more gateway units, that's what we're going to see here, is this stalker v stalker difference, that first shot matters a little bit, as lights, uh, one poor, poor stalker continues to chase it down. Uh, we're going to see a, and yeah, there he is, opting instead of the expansion, kind of getting us some foresight here on what's to come. Um, opting to hesitate, build up a couple more stalkers. Looks like lightweight, looking to be a little more aggressive, rallying across to the other side of the map. Um, or at least giving the perception of aggression as he drops that, drops that nexus. Both players. Uh, ooh, actually, I like it. Lightweight dropping the uh, robotics bay. You know, being a little aggressive, checking up on the back. Uh, oh, yep. there's that robotics bay. Is that a is that a full wall? Yeah, it looks like a, a full wall. And he was hiding, uh, hiding of a very aggressive uh, stalker play coming over here and with the warp prism, going to just round after round of was it three gate, four gate. Well, let's count the gates. Yeah, three gate stalker. Getting the warp in, maybe elevating, elevating it up to the main base, skipping that ramp entirely. It looks like exactly what he wants to do, and that's going to give him the ramp. That's going to give him um, kind of that initial footing. Now there isn't a moral in play that can change everything. Uh, these stalkers getting elevated up. A couple still left on the bottom. He wants full force here if he can get it. Uh, Depowering everything. There's the, another round of warp ends. Uh, this one, this time, it's adepts on the battlefield. Uh, these stalkers are in a fantastic position. If they can find themselves at the right angle, uh, you know, light could take this very quickly. Uh, Sentry shaping the battlefield a little bit there, trying to get better connections. This is the immortal focus fire down, uh, and it's going to be this immortal that pops out here that, that could save the day or, or just fall so quickly. Uh, another round of warp ends here. More adepts coming down. And there's the GG. Light takes the second win for Alpha X. Alpha X is up 2-2-0. Two, two,
zero. Next match is going to be Estrella versus Ghost Hell. Estrella, a very dangerous opponent. Uh, this could be a very quick best of five here. Uh, we'll get right into that after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New Repugnancy. In the top right-hand corner, the Orange Zerg 
representing 3D Clan, it is Ghost Hell. His opponent. In the bottom left hand corner, the red Protoss, it is Astrea. Within this match, you're watching game number three of the second series of the Afrika TV Cup. Brought to you by Alpha Team League. Where the eight strongest clans in the ATL battle it out for their share of the $300 prize pool. Brought to you by Afrika TV, Match Arena, and 24 Hour Fitness. I love, I really do love how these sponsors in Match Arena are bringing, bringing sponsors, bringing uh, more esports money, you know, at this level. It's great support, kind of this grassroots support we're getting. Um, these two players uh, fighting it out for what might be the last game today. Australia, if he takes this game. Uh, in, ends the series and pushes Alpha X into the semifinals. We'll watch that on the 25th. Both of these players have a 2 1 record for the season. Um, now, Alpha X has a very deep lineup. We, we do consistently see Star Killer. Compete in the ATL, um, putting Australia in. You know, he's not the, he's, he's not one of these players where he's just like, hey, you know, he's, he's our last hope. He's the only guy we have left who can play. No, they they have deep enough pockets. Australia, I uh, said, not deep enough pocket, but deep, deep enough lineup that you know, Australia is a very pur purposeful choice here, and he's a very dangerous opponent. Even getting out of here right now with the with the probe, uh, gets the scout, steals the minerals. Australia. Opting for depth first, going into Stargate play. First adept in the middle of the map. I love the scout here. Checks for the third base in the top location with the you know, with the adept. The small little maneuvers, keeping his information uh, you know up to date. Getting over here, getting the shade in. Not a lot to see right now going on at uh, going on with Ghost Hell. He's opted so far to stay on two bases, getting speed, really macroing up. Uh, you know, he's he's focusing on those minerals, gives him a, access to a couple extra queens. Oh, actually, I think at the third base. I, as I say that, like that third base is building uh, right there and almost done. Um, Astra, on the other hand, going for the Oracle. That first Oracle on its way. The first Oracle out. Actually, first second Oracle on its way. First Oracle going across the map, looking to get some damage done. Um, Stalker at the front wall and a depth behind it uh, will deal a significant amount of damage and push back any 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 but the bigger biggest forces from the Zerg. Now this Oracle has been spotted and the uh, Spore Crawler already preemptively in position. At the right angles, it can get a little bit of damage done. Uh, getting three kills for its trouble, getting out of there. Perfect timing. Not taking any any lethal damage, at least. Getting in, getting three kills, backing up. Um, and this Oracle over here. I'm going to provide high ground vision. Going to push away the Overlord. And Australia kind of just dominating the... Dominating the space right now. Even coming out of the wall, finishing off a couple of links. Ooh, turning on the Oracle for it. This one link will be a good scout. Not a lot to see that he doesn't already know, though. I guess what what's not there is also as telling as, as what is there. So a handful of more handful of adepts, again warping in. And this oracle uh, still on top of this overlord. I love it. Just following it, closing off, denying that high ground. You know, hiding, getting that vision. That stalker is going to finish it off with that shot and a, you know, expanding down to that third base location. On the other side, though. Ghost in Hell has been macroing up super heavy. That hatchery about to finish into a layer. Looks like Roach production uh, about to kick off in, in full steam with uh, yeah, Roach speed upgrade. Really focusing on the quantities there. Uh, but 16 
fully saturating the, the minerals here. I love this. On the third base, handful of queens ready to respond. Uh, maneuver around. These links over here, good catch. Gonna deny one of those, maybe even... Nope, not getting the second one. It will fade in. Oracle's coming in, trying to get a second hit, getting three more drones for the troubles at five kills. A couple of links in there when it turned on the other side of the map. Um, so six, actually six drones total for the commitment to the Oracles. I love the double robotics facility over here at the third base location, being pushed away by sentries. And these links trying to find, trying to find an opening, trying to poke around. I love this. Your ghost is, is on the map, using his units, keeping a presence. Now, Double Robo immediately moves into uh, Double Immortal play, or Double Immortal production. And in as little as a few minutes, that's going to become a, a very uh, a very large number of Immortals uh, backing up whatever force Australia decides to, to work with. And that moment of vulnerability with this tech up is, is shrinking. It does look like Ghost Hell is going to try to capitalize on it with the, with a small push. Roach Speed about to pick up seven more roaches on the way. These Oracles staying close to the army. Not going to be a, a sneaky Roach push if a Roach push. Uh, seven more about to pop out. Twelve more actually. Six more in production. Six, seven more popping out. These numbers climbing steadily here. Um, Ghost Hell, 79 army supply to 50. Uh, it's Queens marching across to, to make this an even bigger threat. Uh, the Immortals, two Immortals on the board need to stay alive, need to stay relevant. The battle-shaping abilities of the Oracle denying this attack even longer. They, they warp around trying to find an avenue to the second base, or the third base. Um, Oracles get in there and again shape this well. They will be able to shave off a handful of roaches. Excellent play here from Estrella. And now four Immortals on the battlefield completely changing the dynamic of this attack. Ghost Tell, which was, was something that was... Uh, uh, undeniably scary threat is now a, l a little bit more manageable. Uh, does look like Estrella being caught off guard a little bit as the army gets into a great position at the front wall, uh, hand uh, handing a, a couple of probes to it, getting some lings into the main base, and pulling the rest of the army aside. Uh, responding to this is going to require a handful of warp-ins down at the main base as... Uh, it's actually going to require a commitment of forces. It does look like we get a little bit of a recall with some zealots in. And this engagement here, this back and forth. I love the Oracles uh, spreading out the stasis. We're trying to map out the battlefield, but 12 drones. 12 drones going down. Australia can afford them a little bit, so has a bit of a worker advantage, but um, they're just now cleaning up those links. All right. This is shaping out to be a heck of a fight. The battlefield has been, the mines have been laid, uh, but it does look like Ghost Hell going to pull back home. Transitioning, adding some hydras, adding some more roaches to his army, trying to be a, a, a bit of a larger threat. Um, he is going to have to deal with six to eight and, and growing number of immortals. Um, that switch in the hydra is a pretty good one. Uh, you know, for that. Will be a pretty good one for a bit. We'll see if Estrella transitions out of that anytime soon. There is, there you go, hydra speed on the way. Fully saturated on three bases, getting that fourth base kicked off. Uh, anybody's fight right now. Definitely an economic advantage here. Um, for, I want to say four ghosts. As he's sitting on, take, take a look at that. It was in Australia's favor for most of the fight. Uh, pinging up there with that full saturation and, and knocking out a handful of probes. And the army value steadily climbing. Uh, units lost, however. The best fights have been taken uh, by Australia, only losing really the, the biggest loss there out, out of the was that uh, the tack in that took out all the probes. Um, so, really got to give it to Australia for shaping the battlefield, taking the right kind of fights. Now, this is an interesting forward nexus. Uh, looks like he's almost looks like he's trying to take two bases at once. He's that confident in his abilities to, to engage this fight. A handful of zealots warping in will we'll take a brunt of the we'll, we'll kind of block off the the full force swarming of the nexus pushes back the the zerg as this is kind of this positioning dance we've seen several times both these armies trying to find the right way to connect to this uh Australia, no stranger to the force fields but the zerg army so much more mobile wrapping around splitting the forces uh ling's gonna looks like swarm around take out that fourth base a great a great uh, stasis board there, capturing a large portion of that army. But these lings coming around the back, 
Uh, should get a cancel out of this Nexus as the main army forces engage over here. A uh, handful of Immortals way out of position. Uh, as this main fight takes place, the, the Stasis Warded uh, Roach is now coming back to life, being shaved right back down. These Stasis Wards, I say, so, um, these Force Fields, um, really making this the exact engagement that Estrella wants. You can see that army supply has almost flipped over. Uh, moving back to the army, lost tab. Uh, more than double the supply and growing. Lost her out of the Zerg. Back home. Nope. Oh, handful of Zealots warp in. Uh, dealing significant amounts of damage uh, to the drone line. 41 to 61 workers. Mutas have entered the battlefield, though. Uh, there's a lot of this army that doesn't shoot up. As he again tries to, Australia tries to grab the forward nexus. Uh, this is going to have to be a, a large commitment to anti-air... Uh, to take care of this this massive just piled up kind of like a reveal right now these mutas were um were gathering in such large numbers this is a, a devastating size here now phoenix is well controlled can can deal with this um but the wrong move and these these mutas melt melt these phoenixes australia's really got to stay on top of this force and it does look like um he's going to deny this stargate for a while here it is going to be a switch over to stalker warp ends um the upgrades uh the pylons actually being the target of their harassment. Now, that being said, the, the ground force has to, is moving across to the other side of the map to try to get the damage done. Uh, it can, taking out mutas uh, in route, preventing the, the mass rally and gather. A couple of archons uh, and sentries should keep this safe from a, a complete dive bomb of, of mutas, but it does look like Ghost Hell clamping in on it. There go the force fields. The Phoenix is jumping in on this. There's a GG, and Estrella takes game number three and will win it for Alpha X. Moving on to the first map of the semifinals. It will be Infinity Gaming versus Alpha X. We've seen some absolute monsters here today. Great, fantastic games. GG to both those teams. Um, and it looks like we'll see you tomorrow for part two. We're going to do Mickers and Bear Me versus Sistorm Gaming and Wolfpack. Uh, same time tomorrow, same place. Um, make sure to check it out. And again, thank you to our sponsors, 24 Hour Fitness, for making this possible, for making this uh, absolutely a, a fantastic, fantastic series of games. We have so much uh, in store for you. Uh, 24 Hour Fitness uh, dropping in. Wants me to let you know to bring your friends, get your results. Your way with a free fit plan, studio classes, pools, cardio equipment, 436 locations, a network of clubs, all included in your membership. Try them for free with the seven-day pass when you complete one of their sponsor quests. If you haven't yet, go over to Matcharino page, put in that code of Freaka TV Cup, show your support, add free 50 cents to the prize pool. Uh, and again, great games, great audience. I'll see you all. Make sure I don't have anything else we need to say. Yeah. Hey, I'll see you all tomorrow. Same same game time, same game channel. We got nice transition screen. Nice transition screen. And a word from our sponsors. Time is